Okay, so we're going to look at number five from our pretest. And one of the things about this is you can get suckered into thinking way too hard in doing this problem. All right, so we're told that the kinetic energy of the car is 8 times 10 to the 6 joules as it travels along a horizontal road. And they're asking us how much work is required to stop the car in 10 seconds. So a lot of times when we're doing this, we think, oh, work equals force times distance. Then we look at our problem we're like, oh gosh, we're not given the work, or we're not given the force, we're not given a distance. Well, maybe I can find its acceleration since I'm given the time, and I can find out how far it went. You are making way too much work for yourself. Pardon the pun. We also need to remember our other definition of work. Work is also our change in kinetic energy. Hey look, we had this much kinetic energy, we stopped so we have no kinetic energy, so our change in kinetic energy is the same as the energy that we started with, so guess what? There is our answer right there, the same as what we started with. Okay, so in this problem, we have a helicopter. It's moving along at 25 meters per second at an altitude of 185 meters. Okay, and says what is the total mechanical energy of the helicopter? So basically, how much energy does it have? And so we have to ask ourselves our three basic questions Is it moving? Yes, it's moving, so it has kinetic energy. Is it above ground? Yes, it is, so it also has gravitational potential energy. Is it stretched or compressed? Well, it's not a spring or a rubber band or anything like that, so that's kind of a moot point. So then to answer this question, we go ahead and we substitute in the expressions for kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. These two together are our mechanical energy. So, our kinetic energy is one-half mv squared, and our gravitational potential energy is mgh, and those together are going to be our mechanical energy. So, one-half times 1250 times v squared, 25, and we're going to square that, and then we're going to add 1250 times G, 9.8, it's still 9.8, times our height, 185 meters. And so when we solve all of this and we do all the math, we end up with 265 something, so which rounds off to 266 times 10 to the 6 joules. See, easy enough? All right, so here's one for the next page. We have a block and it's six meters high and it's gonna fall and they're gonna ask us what's the velocity at the bottom so we ask ourselves what's what kind of energy does it have at the top so is it above ground yes so it has gravitational potential energy at the top is it moving no it's not moving so it doesn't have kinetic energy and again we don't have a spring so there's no elastic potential energy down at the bottom, is it above ground? No, now it's like it's like that nanosecond above the ground. Or it's just how far, you know, wherever it is. Is it moving? Yes, it is moving, so it has kinetic energy. And is it stretched or compressed? No. So, conservation of energy, the total energy that we had at the top is going to equal our total energy at the bottom. If we had somewhere in the middle, we would have both gravitational and kinetic energy. So we're just going to sub substitute in our expressions. We have gravitational potential energy at the top is going to equal our kinetic energy at the bottom. So gravitational potential energy is mgh, and that's equal to 1 half mv squared. Do you notice both sides have an M? 
So the M's actually cancel out. This is actually a rearrangement of one of our kinematics equations. Remember we had V squared equals V naught squared plus 2AX. Okay, our V naught is 0. And if we bring the 2 over here, the 1 half from this side and bring it over here, that becomes 2GH2 two times the acceleration times the height. And notice our kinematics equations didn't have any mass in it. So this is just a different way to do those kinematics problems. So we have 9.8 times our height, 6, is equal to 1 half V squared. And when you solve for V, you come up with 26 meters per second. And it turns out that if you can do 11, you can do 12, because 12 is done pretty much the exact same way. Okay, last one for this video. <coughs> In number 17, we have work equals force times distance. Because we have our work, the work done on the block. We have a force, and we have a distance. Now, we have to be careful, because the question says, what's the angle? Well, what's the angle have to do with anything? And here's what it has to do with. When we calculate work, you need your force and your distance to be in the same direction. So your displacement is horizontally, so you need your force to be horizontal. Okay, so of that 40 Newton force that we have at some angle, which we're trying to find, we actually want this we want this portion here, we want the x component of that. So remember the way we found that is we went 40 cosine theta and that gives us our x component. Okay, so we know our work 247 and our force is the 40 cosine and then whatever that angle is that we're solving for and our displacement is the 7 meters and so you cos theta equals 0.88. So you could get sucked into saying 88 degrees. That would be incorrect. You don't want to do that. Because you have the cosine of the angle. You need to take the inverse cosine of 0.88 to get your actual angle. And you find out that it's 28 degrees. Now your book does give you the equation work equals FD cos theta. Okay, and that's generally what people do. I would generally ignore that cosine theta part because it's just all it's doing is putting your your force and your displacement in the same direction. You just need to know that. You need to know that if your force is horizontal your displacement needs to be horizontal. If your force is vertical, your displacement needs to be vertical. Okay? Don't don't worry about the angle because a lot of times you'll be given your force horizontally and you'll be given your displacement horizontally and you'll be looking at it and you go, okay, what's cosine theta? What's the angle? Well, the angle is really zero degrees. There's no angle between the two things. And it really, really, really just confuses the issue. So what you want to know is that work equals force times your displacement, or it's your change in energy. Don't forget it's your change in energy, because we used that before. And your force and your displacement need to be in the same direction.